What's up, guys? Starting this a little different. Just wanted to show this. Ah, man. <clears throat> so, I didn't get on it right when I said I was going to. Obviously, it's dark outside. Where's the light? Oh, there's no light because it's dark outside. Mm. I, mean, I meant, where's the window? <laughs> All right, guys. So, uh, what's up? Just wanted to hop back in for a quick little discussion here. Uh, this won't take very long. But it's something I've, I've actually wanted to do for a really long time. <clears throat> and that is talk about the new generation i can't remember what the fucking generation number is on the accord maybe the same as the civic similar i don't know 10th 11th 9th modern 2000 was it 17 when they started these shits yeah 2017 to, to present the uh accord uh <clears throat> a couple months ago i was at a bank and they had one sitting on display out in front of the bank and it was uh you know the, the accord sport and uh, my my gripe with the Accord has been the uh, the interior. <clears throat> I don't know. It just the interior and the dash cluster and everything just seems really plain compared to the Civic. You know, thinking that it's a more expensive car, I would figure that it would just be a little bit you know, at least on par with the Civic. That's my personal opinion. That's whatever. The body style, the body styles are pretty good. Um, actually, I think I like the last generation's style a little bit better than than this current one. I think the little bit the last one looked a little bit more like a BMW and I think it was just it was just really neat but um of course we're talking about the modern one because of the big change that they made right so they did away with the V6 uh, I'm pretty I feel I feel pretty confident that, that the V6 model isn't something they do anymore and instead they decided to go with the depowered type R engine and that's why <clears throat> this is important to me uh uh, fuck. I did make the mistake of not looking recently, which, damn, I, I, I fucked up on that. Let me see if I can find it without making too much fuss here. But, um, uh, let's see. Teen Accord Sport MSRP. My bad that I'm taking time here to search. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, huh. Okay, 26000 I did think that's what it was, and that is what it is. So, <clears throat> the Accord uh, Sport is 26000 right? And I think that's somewhere in the same range as the SI. Now, I'm looking at curb weight here now. Curb weight is 3,100 uh, pounds to 3,200 pounds. <clears throat> so, it's not super heavy. Definitely heavier than the Civic. Let's see. Let's just take a while and look at it right quick. It's just as a comparison, right? Because that's what this is about. This is not really so much talk about the... Okay, so the base model Civic is 19K, and the SI is... 24,000. Really close. Curb weight is 28 to 2,900. So we're talking about a 200-pound difference here, right? <clears throat> oh... And that's another thing, man. I took a screenshot of uh, Durf's, uh, Durf's fucking tuning graph a while ago. <clears throat> but I fucking, I forgot to look at it before I started the video. Anyway, I'm not going to restart it because I, I kind of, I got a good idea, a good memory of what it was, what numbers were generally around. At least for horsepower wise. But, uh, so, okay, so, the reason why, oh, this is the core sport I've had in my eye on it for a while is because the whole Type R engine thing, right? Now, I, when I took a picture of the, uh, of the Accord Sport that was sitting at that bank, if you go back on my Instagram, it's not that far back because I don't think I've been posting a lot of pictures recently, so you can go see it. But somebody popped up in there and was like, oh, because I, I was like, it's a detuned Type R. It's the same engine, but just, uh, with the tuning tweaks. <clears throat> now, it, I'm not, I wasn't exactly right there, but I wasn't very far from the truth somebody else came on there and was like no it doesn't have the same kind of pistons and rods it's like it pretty much like a husk of the engine just the block and the internals are completely different they don't hold the same kind of power that's not the case at least from what i'm seeing i started digging around to be sure but uh from what i can see the only major difference in the uh the the type r engine that's in the sport versus the type r itself is that uh, it's got uh, more mild cams um, and a, a, a milder cam setup, uh, and it's got a smaller turbo. Other than that, from what I'm gonna see, and it's all the same. <clears throat> so, uh, what what reignited my want and desire to talk about this again is because I seen uh, uh, was it somebody did um, a turbo upgrade from the the sport turbo to the Type R turbo. So just boosting it up like OEM to OEM, they went up a size to the Type R turbo, and they did a tune, and they were making well over 300 horsepower. And, uh, and very good torque numbers. I just can't remember off the top of my head what they were. But um, 
if you think about it, right, if you consider <clears throat> if you consider where the Accord Sport falls in price range and weight, uh, I definitely don't think it's something bad at all to consider, right? So you're only paying, it's only a couple thousand more than the SI. It only weighs, there's a 200 pound difference. And you have an engine that's capable of, you know, a good amount of power. Now, it's not really fair to say how much more power is capable of or the K20 uh, that comes in the uh, Civic and the SI and shit, or the, the Civic SI, because I don't think anybody's really found the upper limits yet. Now, another thing I thought was kind of funny is I'm seeing a lot of people building these engines. I'm, I'm seeing forged pistons and rods for Type R's all the time, but the last time I remember seeing any kind of update about the world record for the Type R, or fastest Type R, was like 11 seconds. So, 11 seconds to me seems like something that should be achievable in stock form. So... While I'm seeing built engines and seeing the numbers, they don't just don't add up in my mind. Now, of course, the car is still relatively new, and from what I hear, the, the, the platform itself is very satisfying as it comes from factory, which <clears throat> I was talking about on my, my live stream earlier, that uh, that's, what, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that's not crazy fast, but something that just comes, you know, comes with a decent amount of power that can be very enjoyable in the streets. And I've also, also another thing I've talked about over the years is like one of my favorite cars I've ever owned was the was a slightly modified SRT4. Um, as as far as modifications goes, I don't think there was anything done internally. I don't there wasn't any bolt-ons or anything, but the boost was increased. So the boost was raised. I think the stock boost for pressure for the SRT4 is like 14 pounds, and I was running like 17. Uh, it was it was really super fucking fast responsive. So that's the benefit of having a smaller turbo with a good amount of displacement. Good amount of displacement considering four cylinder wise, but a uh, good amount of displacement with a smaller turbo. Yeah, you may not have a super beast, uh, but you have something that's capable of very snappy, speedy response. You know, get through traffic really well. Maybe not do great on a drag strip, but definitely do good around the circular track and uh, the day to day. And uh, that so that's something I'd be really would like to uh, like to have. Okay, so I just pulled up the, the Type R. Type R is 36000 It says from 36000 So, of course, you know, unless you're getting a used Type R, I think that you're going to spend a good amount more if you're trying to buy brand new. I didn't see the curb weight, uh, but I would imagine it's not crazy heavier than the SI, but because there's only a 200-pound difference between the Civic, uh, the Civic and, um, and the uh, Accord, I would imagine that with the extra features and shit that the Type R brings, that it probably matches. Uh, oh, no, yeah, see there, there it goes. I found it. Thirty-one hundred pounds curb weight. Thirty-one hundred pounds. So the Type R matches the weight of the Accord. So then I guess at that point to see which one would be the faster car, uh, it wouldn't really. It would come down to like wheelbase and suspension and shit like that. So um, you know, but I think you have a very, very similar setup for ten thousand dollars less. And something that's t you know that technically could be worth this uh, or the same amount of power. Now I don't know how that would work uh, for warranty wise for you all that would be concerned about that. I know that some people are like oh, I don't give a fuck about warranty. I do. If I'm buying a brand new car, I want that warranty to last for as long as it fucking possibly can. If I can make that warranty, if I can ride that warranty out for the entire time I own the car, then that's what I want to do. <clears throat> um, but you know. That that just comes with the fact that if I'm if I have to go super fast if I really want a super fast car uh, then I'll just build something instead of trying to uh, modify a car that you technically is bank owned right unless you're buying it outright you don't really own that car and who the fuck wants to go through putting bolt ons and shit onto a car that they have to take off if they want to not lose money if they go to trade the car and or sell it right so uh, there's that so um, for for you guys that are out there looking for something and you have some money in the bank that, and you have some decent credit and you're looking at something new. And you're looking at Honda, and you're and you're eyeballing that Civic Si. Uh, if you're not opposed to the body type, uh, then the Accord uh, the Accord is something the Accord Type R. <laughs> we don't. It's not an Accord Type R, but uh, the Accord Sport is something that you might want to give a serious consider and a serious look at. Uh, I would guess this. You know, I'm not really big on. You know, I don't really care too much about. Um, was it a test driving cars? Um, I think if I if I pick out, I pick out a car and if I that I want and when I want that car, I just go and say, hey, give me this car and do the paperwork and I ride out. You know, maybe that seems kind of silly, but uh, that's just my men mentality going into it. But I guess uh, if you want to make a deciding factor or whatever, and it's a good thing is because you can ride them both at the same dealership. They're both Hondas. Go in there and be like, hey, yo, I want to you know let me test drive this Accord Sport and then let me test drive an SI. Me, I think another thing is too is like I like cars that are a little bit more compact. Not so much like overall size, but I like the compact feel and size. I like that cockpit feel. 
Uh, I like to feel snug inside the vehicle. You know, I don't mind feeling a little bit closed down, which is funny because I'm kind of claustrophobic. But when it comes to cars, I, I, I like to feel like I'm in there, like I'm I'm seated in there firmly, I'm not going anywhere. The Accord's a lot more spacious. But uh, <clears throat> that's also something to consider too, like maybe if you got kids or a family or maybe you're just a bigger dude or whatnot, you like to have that extra space. So then the Accord is definitely looking like a juicy snack. Um, I, I've talked about it a couple of times. I really wanted to buy a new car this year. You know, things happen with the craziness with the work and me probably leaving and shit soon. So that's immediately put on hold. But, um, you know, just looking at the Accord up close again, you know, considering the SI, and then of course eventually I'd, I'd like to get in the Type R, which is funny because once upon a time I said I would never spend that money on a Type R. If I had the money, I'd buy a fucking uh, Camaro SS or a Mustang, because if I'm gonna if I'm gonna spend that kind of money, I don't want to buy a car that's gonna be beaten by the you know the American Muscle guys. <coughs> because at the end of the day, we gotta be real here and say that in your day to day traffic, if you're pulling with somebody on the highway, the uh, the Type R really isn't that impressive now i know it's probably something i shouldn't be saying because i'm not I haven't driven one i don't own one or whatnot but right away what's the first thing that you saw when the type r's went like local when they started getting going on the street uh k20 swapped eg like uh, just an na k swap direct bolt-ons k20 destroyed a type r and that's just gonna happen because we're talking about a 3,000 plus pound car 3,100 pound car that makes like a uh, 305 flywheel so i think they make like what 295 285 so shit like that to the crank so when you're talking about a car that's, you know, like six, seven, eight hundred pounds heavier and they're very close in power, <clears throat> it's natural that the, the little swap cars are going to win. So that's something I do consider, like, you know, I do like the, you know, I've talked about this before, you know, power to money ratio, power to cost, power to the power to cost. Like if I'm going to spend a lot of money, uh, then I would like in that price range that I have that I'm looking for, I would like generally find, find the fastest car. But I am showing a little bit more brand loyalty now and uh if i had if i come up with the point where i can if i can buy another car and and if i can if my price range works out right for a, a, a type r or whatnot then i would definitely hop on one uh because i know it's a car that i could just buy and it's so super cool inside i've seen them enough now at haunted days now that i would i think i would have a lot of fun daily driving that car um <clears throat> uh, so my credit it keeps bouncing between like 580 and 600 so that's yeah, a personal information now you think oh that's fucking crazy low well me personally i know that you know from past experience that around 620 credit mark you know i can generally have whatever i want you know because my income is enough to make up for what i don't have in direct credit right and interest rates believe it or not aren't that nasty you know i've been there already uh as far as as my credit wise goes like i have i think i've only got like three lines of bad debt open and they're like two of them are like a hundred dollars and i think that they're like estimated 25 point boost from just each knocking one of those out and uh so at this point i'm I'm at the point where i have to open credit card lines to to make my shit go up any more than what it is <clears throat> so and that's something i plan on doing while i'm you know when if the reenlistment goes well i'll leave and i go to, uh, to back to the army that's something i plan on taking care of there so <clears throat> i can imagine that would be done my credit would be boosted up to well over what it's ever been before within a year or so because i've gotten to the habit of not spending money and having a couple thousand dollars available at all times so that helps with uh, the banks looking at you and shit and you've never been negative and you've always had a couple grand so so starting off with the bank to help build credit in there and then so who knows man me if i'm sitting on a couple thousand at all times then you know paying another you know bank note to have a car that i can enjoy it's really that big a deal for me so even though i'm paying one now for the chr <clears throat> so who knows that's a possibility uh or who, maybe maybe uh i you know the first time i'm trying to teach my, my wife how to drive stick uh she wasn't driving at all so it was kind of a nightmare but i think she's, she's been driving for you know six years now so uh, uh, teaching her how to drive stick again would be something i would like to reapproach. and um so who knows maybe i'd try to do that and she get comfortable with it and then we could switch out to the type r as a daily instead of the chr and it's still a sedan and we could all have fun driving that <laughs> Anyway, so I've gone like five or seven minutes beyond talking about the uh, the, the Accord or whatnot, but it, I didn't figure this would be something long. It's just something I wanted to talk about. I think that the <clears throat> I think that the Accord is generally and always has been an overlooked platform. I know that it has its loyalty and its fan base, but uh, for any guys that are new, younger or whatnot that are considering a car, <clears throat> or somebody that's young also that's getting rid of their car for a family car, you don't have to necessarily sacrifice and the enjoyment of driving a fun car. Just because you're having a family you don't have to buy a big truck you don't have to buy a big suv especially if you only have one kid you know i've had small cars forever it's only recently that i've got you know the suv i've had a couple of trucks that didn't last long with them and whatnot but um 
you know, until you're, unless your kids are in their teens, man, they're not gigantic. Unless you have three kids plus, you don't really need a fuck ton of cabin space. You know, a regular mid-sized sedan is completely fine. Unless you and your wife have to be really tall people and you're worried about crushing your kids' legs. But, um, yeah, just something to definitely consider. And I, and I look forward to seeing, um... Uh, people play with these cars a little bit more uh the car is still very new so i don't expect to see a lot of them because people are still focused on the si and the type r and getting those cars cracked i would imagine over the next five or so years or stuff and especially after the next generation comes out and that we start getting the big depreciation on these uh, current accords that we're gonna start to see some good things um and I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. I, I think that Honda is very late to the show. They used to be like cutting edge, leading in the market for performance. And then somewhere in the in the in the 2000s, they started to greatly lag behind. I'm just very happy now they're finally starting to be competitive. It's crazy that uh, that the American market like eclipsed you know them for a good while with with the with the, what they were doing with the Focus RS and some of the other cars. So I'm, I'm happy to see them playing catch up now and I'm glad to see that they're, you know, more performance oriented across the board. Like, you know, a basic Civic has a turbo on it. That's cool. All right, guys, so that, that's all uh, I want to talk about right now and uh, let's catch y'all next time. Peace.